Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech M4A4 Sherman tank. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the model's gun as well as the gun manlet. We'll be going over these revisions and modifications in this video. Moving our way to the model's main gun, the model's main gun does have its elevation feature with it. Now, this is where this model is going to be different from all of the 24 other ArmorTech Fireflies that were made. Because I wanted to build this tank as an American M4A4 as opposed to the Firefly, I went ahead and when purchasing the kit, I requested to have the turret and gun from their first release M4A3. In addition to the components they supplied that were from the original M4A3 release, they also supplied me the equipment as well as the machinery to, from the Firefly in order to make the gun go up and down. So this model here is going to be unique in that it's going to have a little bit of both designs in it in order for it to be functional. Starting with what was from the original kit, we have here the aluminum barrel, the rotor, or the tronion or breech block, I guess you could call it. You have the rotor drum itself, the M34D mantlet, as well as two brass machined pivot mounts, the subloom itself, which contains the limit switches, are from the newer version of the Firefly. However, this component has not changed since the first release. Now, getting into what's from the Firefly kit, that would, that would include the other machinery here, which is used to make the gun go up and down. That would include this steel bracket, this brass cap as well as lug, the pivoting screw, motor mount, the lug track, as well as a geared motor. To get an idea on how the two guns are assembled, I have here the two instruction sheets. This here is the instruction sheet for the original M4A3, if we can notice the release date of 2005. In there we can see here the gun and the trunnion mount all assembled. On this version of the model, pretty much all of the gun elevating equipment was integrally mounted onto the rotor drum that we see here. It was a pretty clean little system. It utilized two very small gears and the motor was affixed to this little brass mount here which also acted as the pivoting points for the gun. Compare that to the Firefly instruction that we have here for the 5C Firefly. The gun design is a little bit more different. The actual block itself is a lot lower profile and the gun on this kit was actually designed to recoil. The gun for the original M4A3 was designed for the original blank firing system which has since been replaced. The motor as we can see here gets affixed to the turret floor. This small little bracket here is not found on the turret that I am using however it is going to have to be fabricated out of a piece of steel. Even though this design is a little bit more elaborate than that on the original on the original M4A3 it, it, because of some of the extra fittings and equipment and functions I'm going to be adding to this gun here this design here lends itself to be a lot more practical than that of the original gun design so with that I'm going to be modifying the original gun parts to fit with this system now there's going to be a little bit of fabrication work re required to do this but keep in mind this is only because I custom bought the kit to tampered from the kit original. If the model was simply left as a Firefly, none of this modification would be required and you could simply build the gun out of the box like you see here. For the tank's mantlet, the original Armatech release came with the mantlet that you see here. It This replicates the M34D late style mantlet. 
And the mantlet is composed of two pieces. You have the mantlet and you have the rotor drum. Both pieces are very nicely made. They're made out of die cast, seems like die cast aluminum. Very robust and assemble very easily. This is the same exact mantlet and rotor drum component that you see mounted to my other ArmorTech M4A3. Which videos of that model can be found on my video listings. Because my vehicle is being built for such an early war period vehicle, this manlet design was not around when the tank was built, and keeping this system would be anachronistic. Because of that, I will not be using this manlet on my Sherman. Instead, I needed to fabricate the original, earlier style M34 manlet. The M34 manlet was a lot simpler and a lot smaller in profile than the later production M34D. As we can see, the M34D evolved from the original M34. Some differences between the two mantlets are as follows. First of all, on the M34, the fasteners on the rotor drum do not progress past this point here. They are only, the fasteners are only found around the rim and end once they reach to the one end point here of the, of the rotor drum. On the earlier mantlet, that's not the case. The fasteners run all along the plate as we see here. Also, as we could see with the earlier style M34 rotor drum, this version here has two eyelets that are integrally casted directly into the mantlet rotor drum itself. These eyelets were not present on the later M34D style rotor mount. Now there are actually a few versions of this rotor drum too which predated this one. I have seen several versions, probably most likely earlier, earlier production units, in which the eyelets were not present. A lot of those units were also upgraded to have the eyelets welded on in place as opposed to the integrally cast units that we have here. Another difference between the two rotor drums is the actual profile itself. This one here, it's more slabbed drum style appearance, while on the earlier unit it has more of a taper to it on the corners and is more bulbous in shape. As for the external mantlets themselves, the external mantlet itself actually grew from this unit here. This unit here has its integral gun protection collars molded in. However, there was a unit that predated this one in which these collars are not present and the only thing that protects the rotor itself is just this slab of of steel that we would have here. The two units are fixed to the rotor drum in the same exact way. The reason for the thin appearance was because when the rotor, when the mantlet and rotor design were first developed, there was no gunner's direct vision periscope which would have been in this location here. Also the Bow 1919 machine gun was also left exposed emerging from the mantlet. As the war progressed, a shield was developed to slip over the Bow M1919. In addition, shortly after the Sherman saw action, it was decided to add a periscope that would have been in line with that of the main gun. The, after this periscope was added, a collar was developed and was welded to this side portion here of the mantlet. This little armor collar would have protected the periscope from any damage. Once it was decided to have the scope here, the last design modification would have been that of the M34D like we have here. As we could see on this unit, the scope portion is protected along with the Bow M1919 in one complete unit as opposed to a hodgepodge of two or three different parts. By doing this, production was cut down and armor protection was improved. The early style M34 mantlet that we have here is a new addition to the EastCoastArmy.com product line and can be found on the catalog page which is listed below. 
The kit contains the rotor drum as well as the skinny mantlet. There are also other versions of this mantlet currently in research and development and will be released subsequently. The resting components themselves feature their rough cast texture. In addition to the casting texture, they also feature the cast marks that we have here. This is all one piece casting and the eyelets are integrally casted to the rotor drum just like on the real vehicle. Even though these components that we have here are compatible for the Armor Tech tank, they are also can, they can also be used on any 1/6 scale tank that is on the market. The type of vehicles that would receive this type of an early style drum would be that of the Viper of the 1/6 scale M4 Sherman from Viper as well as the new and upcoming Composite Hull Firefly from Dragon. With the addition of these parts, you can convert the Dragon Firefly into that of a composite hulled M4 Sherman. Moving our way to the tank's gun barrel. The barrel itself is all made out of CNC aluminum and is typical quality for that of ar for an Armor Tech gun barrel. It's got its taper to it, it's very finely machined, and it's pre-threaded. The gun simply just threads directly into the trunnion that we have here, or the rotor that we have here. Now, this unit is from the original Sherman. I believe the Firefly might be slightly more in depth than this unit here for the fact that the Firefly barrel is designed to recoil with the tank, while this barrel is simply just a static barrel. One thing that always caught my attention on these Armor Tech Shermans though, is the fact that the end of the, of the barrel is threaded. This is common on all the Armor Tech German tanks for the fact that there's a gun muzzle brake which threads directly to the end of the gun barrel. However, the Sherman with the 75mm gun never received any type of gun muzzle, so the fact that the threads were added to this kit here is somewhat a bit of a mystery. Also, with like some of the older Armor Tech tanks, the barrel does have some CNC marks that we have here along the barrel. If we listen, we could hear the little zipping noise, which is created from all the little tiny little bumps which are left on the barrel from the machining process. To take care of the barrel, I'm going to smooth it out on the lathe via some sandpaper at, or, and some emery cloth. Once the emery cloth makes a few passes, the barrel will be completely smooth and you will not hear the zipper noise that we have here on, along the barrel. Even with the tooling marks, they're so very fine that most people just leave the barrels as is and just simply paint over them and it's not really noticeable once a few layers of paint have been added. As for the gun's elevation mounting bracket, that is facilitated by this unit here. As you can see, the unit is all comprised out of one piece laser cut steel that is, has all of its holes pre-drilled into it and is pre-bent to the shape we have here. The purpose for this bracket is actually for that of the Firefly's recoil system, which is being mounted to the current generation of Armatech tanks. If we notice, there's a, a slot here for a servo in which the servo would pull back the gun once it's been commanded to fire. This unit was not developed during the time of the earlier release Sherman. The earlier release Sherman was actually designed to have a large 12 gauge blank firing system which would have been affixed to these four holes here. Now because the two plates are not compatible with each other they're going to have to be modified in a way that allows me to secure this bracket to this trunnion here. Now because if we notice the longer shape of the earlier unit this bracket here is going to have to be modified and it's going to have to be trimmed down somewhat. Because of the longer shape of the, of the trunnion, the steel bracket here, once it fits to the unit, is going to be so long that it's going to make contact with the rear portion of the tank's turret. Because of that, this problem most likely section here will be removed in order to just have the elevation equipment mounted here to the side.
again, this is only because these two units are from two separate kits. If you are building one of the Fireflies, you will not have to worry about performing this type of a procedure. On a similar note, the two bosses, which are used to affix the rotor to the rotor, or the trunnion to the rotor drum, facilitated by these two CNC brass bosses. If we notice, this boss here has a, tomb show, a tombstone shaped plate to it that's integrally CNC'd into the brass. The purpose of this plate would have been for mounting of the geared motor, which would have made it to another gear which would have been bolted to the side here and that would have elevated the gun up and down. Because the system for the elevation is going to be changed from the kit original, this tombstone shaped plate here is no longer going to be needed. One feature that I wanted to build into this model, which is a little bit different than from what I've seen on the other armor tech tanks that I've seen floating around, is I wanted to have the ability to fire projectiles out of the out of the tank. To for this, I went ahead and opted for an airsoft unit. For the firing unit itself, I went ahead and utilized the airsoft firing unit from the 116 scale Henlong vehicles. The firing unit itself was was purchased from the following link listed below. The airsoft unit itself is sold as a set and in the set you just receive the firing unit itself. Also included is the electric motor which go ahead and powers the piston to make the BBs fly. What is not included with the set and needs to be acquired is that of a barrel and also a hopper feed mechanism. For the barrel itself, the barrel is just your standard 6mm airsoft barrel. This particular barrel was acquired from eBay and was about 5 bucks. As for the hopper mechanism, this was all scratch built and specifically designed to work within the confined parameters of the Sherman turret. As for the hopper itself, it's actually an old empty container from some power mints. I had just floating around my glove compartment in my car and luckily I didn't throw it out as it makes a perfect vessel for that of the hopper. With its low squat design I could fill it up with a lot of little BBs and because of its little snap lid over here it prevents BBs from getting loose and falling inside the vehicle. Also not only does it have a large door to fill up the tray. It also has a secondary door in which I could use it to go ahead and free any congestion or a, or a BB jam if one is encountered. Another thing I like about the pan is that since the lower portion is made out of tin it made affixing to the rest of the hopper a lot easier since the brass tube is soldered directly to the unit. The, the, the soldering makes it very strong and also allows me to go ahead and flare the unit in with a Dremel making for a nice polished roadway which will prevent any snags or hang ups when the piece is installed in the tank. Also, if we notice, I went ahead and with a small ball peen hammer, I carved in or I went ahead and sculpted in a small little incline and a recess. The purpose of this is that it gives the BBs a nice little funnel and so that when the gravity fed hopper will help the BBs flow into their necessary location. On the top portion here, I went ahead and fabricated a top cover for the, for the actual BB channel. The channel itself is just basic PVC, and if we notice, there's a small little hole here that's directly over the the, the chamber for the, the piston. The purpose of the hole is in case there's another hang-up in this location here, I can get access to it with a small brass rod and free, if, and free up any hang-ups if one is to occur. Keep in mind, this portion here is going to be inside of the tank's turret, so access is a must especially since it needs to be accessed through the one single hatch that's found on the early style Sherman turrets. As for the firing unit itself, the external portion of the firing unit was modified slightly so that it better conforms with that of the armor tech components. As for the internals, they're left totally stock. I didn't go ahead and modify the spring pressure or change out any of the internals 
for the purposes of this build, the stock Henlong unit was will be suffice. Another modification that was made to the unit was that of the main motor. The motor itself, if we notice, has its leads encased in hot glue, as well as redirected to around the back portion of the firing unit. The purpose of the thickened leads is that one thing I've noticed from these small little Mabachi type motors is that the is that the motor leads themselves are very very fragile and have a tendency to snap off, specifically when the wires are left to have a little bit of play on them. To avoid any damage and wear to these pieces, I went ahead and solidified them by encasing them in hot glue. By encasing the leads, there's going to be no worry about the wires having any sort of play which could lead to problems as once the tank is completed and has a little bit of mileage on it.